So here we are, we're finally gonna learn how to calculate outliers. The definition is small, it doesn't take up too many words, but it's, it's gonna take a little bit of number crunching to actually determine if we have outliers present in our data sets. So an observation is an outlier if it is more than one and a half times the IQR away from the nearest quartile. Or you'll hear me say, if it's more than one and a half IQRs away from a quartile. So outliers, if they are present, should appear as dots on the left or right of the plot in a modified box plot. So when you see this, this vocab term modified, it means we're showing outliers. If you have an outlier on the high end of your data, you'll see an isolated dot right off here uh, to the right on the high side of the x-axis. And instead of whiskering all the way out to the max, I will whisker out to the largest non-outlier. If I had an outlier on the low end of my data, I would have a dot here, and I would whisker out to the lowest non-outlier. So with all of that, let's crunch some numbers. How do we figure out if there's an IQR? So I'm gonna create something that I call a safety zone, okay? It's gonna require three steps to calculate this safety zone. Now this is not an official stats term, it's just something I, I called it. I, I needed a method when I was learning about outliers. I wanted I want some kind of algorithm, do this, do this, do this, and figure out if, you're, if you have outliers. So I just created this three-step process. It's not new or innovative, and I, I called it a safety zone. All right, so there are three steps you need to take to determine if you have outliers present in your data. And we're going to revisit that Oregon Department of Health data that we had on hospitals and their cost to charge ratios. So if we remember from last time, all right, and that data is probably still in your calculator, but I'm gonna write the five number summary here. So we had our min, Q1, our median, Q3, oops, and the max. All right. So are there any outliers present in the data? And then construct a modified box plot. And once we introduce this idea of modified box plots, we're only gonna make modified box plots after this. All right, we're always gonna to wanna to determine are there outliers present and then put those on our box plot if they, are, if they are present. All right, so here's how you can determine if there are outliers present. So like I said, there's three steps. We're gonna create something called a safety zone or specifically something I call a safety zone. So the first thing you need to do is calculate the IQR. Okay? And your IQR is always Q3 minus Q1. All right, so whatever your Q3 minus Q1 is, great, crunch that number. So for this particular example, our IQR would have been 76 minus 72. Nope, not 72, excuse me, it was 76 minus 62, which is 14. So if you're ever asked to calculate outliers or show if there's outliers present, step one for your safety zone, build the IQR. Step two, take whatever number you found in step one and multiply it by one and a half. Or if I wanna write it as a formula, take 1.5 and multiply that against your IQR. So I'm gonna take 1.5 and I'm gonna multiply that to 14 because 14 was what I found in step one. So let's figure out what that number is. So in this case, it's, it's also a whole number, it's 21. You don't always need to get a whole number. If you get a decimal here, that's totally fine. All right, so let's do that. We have 21, okay? So if you look at the top of your paper, right, it says an observation is an outlier if it is more than one and a half IQRs away from the nearest quartile. So we found our IQR, we multiplied it by one and a half, and here's where the, the harder or more intricate part comes in building your safety zone. So whatever number you, can, you calculate in step two, you're going to use that in step three. So here's what you do. You take Q1, your lower quartile, and we wanna lower the threshold, meaning we wanna lower this bound by one and a half IQRs. So whatever number I found in step two, subtract it from Q1. Make your lower bound for your safety zone lower than Q1. So we're gonna go Q1 minus 21, okay? On the flip of that, 
we want to raise the upper bound of our safety zone. So I want to take Q3 and add this number to it. All right. So in step three, in order to build the lower bound and upper bound of your safety zone, you're going to lower the Q1 threshold, but raise the Q3 threshold. So let's see what these two numbers would turn out to be. Our Q1 was 62. So I need to do 62 minus 21. And in that case, that would be the number 41. Okay. My Q3, my Q3 was 76. So I'm going to take 76 and add 21 to it. And that's going to give me the number 97. So these two numbers right here create your safety zone. And again, I'm putting it in quotes because it's not an official stats term. You won't find this in a book. This is just something I, I, I made up so that it could help me crunch this, the, these outliers or determine if these outliers were present. So what this is saying is any data values that are between 41 and 97 are safe meaning they are not outliers. Any data values that are outside of this safety zone are quite literally outliers. So let me go through this. Let's look at 68. 68. Is 68 a number between 41 and 97? Yes. That is not an outlier. Okay. 76. Is 76 a number between 41 and 97? Yes, it's in there. It's in the safety zone. It is safe. It is not an outlier. And you can start to go through all of these, but I like to be a little bit efficient. I don't want to go through all 31 data points, so I, I usually use my min and my max. So let's take a look at the min. Right, The minimum is 45. Is 45 considered safe? It is considered safe. So I know I have no outliers on the left half of my data. Okay. But let's go to the max. All right, The max is 100. Is 100 safe? No, it's not. So we have at least one outlier. So I'm going to put these three little dots. They mean therefore. So observation 100 is an outlier. I have at least one outlier. And since it's a max, I have to look for the next largest data value because maybe I have more than one outlier there. If, if you had a large number of data points, you could sort your data. I can sort it, in this case, maybe I'll sort it descending. So I'll say, hey, can you sort L1? Because that's where I left my data. It did it. So let's see, I had three observations of 100. And, and I usually get the question, do I have three outliers? You have one outlier value, and you just have it repeated three times. Here's my next highest observation. It's 88. Okay, so if I look for 88 in my data set, let's see, there it is, right, 88. Now, is 88 an outlier? No, 88 is in the safety zone. So here we go. I really just have the one outlier at 100. So what's about to happen is I'm going to rewrite that box plot. I'm still going to go from 45 to 100, but the graph is just going to slightly modify. So let me go recreate my x-axis. When I just realized I'm doing this out of view for you, let me scoot that up. All I've done is write my x-axis at this point. Okay, oops. I'm going to use the same scaling that I used before. I'm going to go by fives. And again, I want to label my x-axis. So we still have hospital cost to charge ratios. And those are in percents. And again, unlike histograms or bar charts, we don't have anything on the y-axis here. So I need to take my five numbers from my five number summary, and I'm going to make vertical bars. Now, I do want to modify this box plot because I have an outlier present. 
So what that means is instead of putting a vertical bar at 100, I'm going to put a dot there. Okay. And in, in lieu of putting the vertical bar at 100, I need to put a vertical bar at my largest non-outlier. And we already talked about how that was the number 88. So I'm going to make my vertical bars 45. So you'll see I am modifying what I did previously. So I'm still putting vertical bars at 45, 62, 71, and 76, but instead of putting this vertical bar at 100, I've identified that as an outlier, so I put my vertical bar at my highest non-outlier. I'm still going to box the middle 50% of my data. And I'm going to whisker out To the values that are not outliers, the lowest and the highest of those. So again, I like to write my numbers over here. So 62, 71, 76, this was 88, and this was 100. And that is your modified box plot. We're showing the outliers present, whiskering out to the highest non-outlier. If I had had an outlier on the lower end, I would have had a dot over here and I would have whiskered out to the lowest non-outlier. All right, so let's take a look at how we do this on our calculators. All right, guys, we're back. Now that we've picked up outliers, let's modify our box plot. Uh, the upside of this is I don't have to new, do any new data entry, right? I still have my data in my lists. I do need to alter my stat plot. So if we'll look at this icon right here, this is a regular box plot and we want to modify it because there was an outlier present in this data. So we want that to be displayed on the actual plot. So let's go in here. And the difference between these two icons, they're both box plots, but if you see this one, it has two little isolated dots here. That's your calculator's way of communicating. That's the modified box plot. So I want to select this type. And if you remember from last time, once you get into type, don't hit the down arrow key, hit the right arrow key and get into that second row. So when I hit enter, now I'm gonna have my box plot with the, the two little outliers, the modified box plot icon has the black background. And then you get this extra line here and it's just asking, how would you like your, uh, your outliers to be graphed? And this is about as much artistic freedom as you get in your TI-84 calculator. Would you like a hollow square, a plus sign, or a dot? Uh, I'm lazy, so I always just pick the default, which is this hollow square. So once we get um, that all set up, we're good to go. So I'm just gonna hit zoom nine, and there is my modified box plot. Right? Now I can hit trace again. It's starting me over here at the min. If I scroll right, there's Q1, there's the median, there's Q3, and this is nice. Here is your highest non-outlier, which was observation 88. So that's matching what I got when I did it by hand. Okay, and there's my outlier at um, observation 100. So you can see this, this plot, this box plot looks pretty similar to one, the one I graphed on my computer. And it looks similar to the one that we graphed by hand just for fun, and it kind of is a preview of where we're going in the next example, in example seven, if you wanted to put both of these box plots up at the same time, let's say you wanted to see the modified and the regular, we can do that. So let's, let's just kind of branch into this because it's where we're about to go in the next example. If I hit second and y equals, let's go ahead and turn our second plot on. So let's scroll down to plot two and hit enter. Okay. And now again, it's all about the black background. That's what's, what's live in, in your calculator. I need to turn this plot on, so I'm going to hit enter. You see on now has the black background. I would like to make a regular box plot. I already have the modified one hanging out in plot one. So in plot two, let's just make the regular box plot. Yeah. 
All right, and then I'm gonna leave that as is. That's good to go. So before I hit Zoom 9, and you can hit Zoom 9, but I just wanna tag back for a moment. You'll see now if I go into my stat plot screen, I have two plots on. That's the first time we've done that, All right? I'm making a modified box plot of the data about the data set now one and a regular box plot of the data set now one. So I have two plots on, both of them are box plots, one's modified, one isn't, and they're both off of the same data set. So let's hit zoom nine. And you can see there are the two plots I've made throughout example six, modified box plot, regular box plot. Yeah. So there you go. There's your look at how you can create um, modified box plots, and we call these parallel box plots. Parallel because they're not touching. All right, thanks guys.